This is the first lesson in Chapter 6, Part 2, Logarithms. So we, what we've done is actually broken up your textbook into two different parts. Um, so the first half of Chapter 6 deals with exponents, and then the second half of Chapter 6 deals with logarithms, which we call logs for short. So basically, they're in the same chapter because they're very closely related, but we do separate them because you need to have a really good foundation with exponents before you can move on to logarithms. So let's define what a logarithm is um, and talk about what our objectives are for the day. So we're going to rewrite exponential equations as logarithms. So we can transform a logarithm to an exponential equation or an exponential equation to a logarithm. So our first objective, you're going to kind of see that we're going to be able to transform from one form to the, to the other. Um, we're also going to evaluate a log. Just like you can evaluate exponents, you can also evaluate logs. And we're also going to solve logarithmic equations, just like you were able to solve exponential equations before. In this box, we have the formal definition for what a logarithm is. And I really want to stress to you that a logarithm is just an exponent. So when you are asked to evaluate something like 2 to the third, okay, what you ask yourself here is 2 raised to the third power gives me what number, right? Well, in a logarithm, what we do is we slightly change this question. So in a logarithm, you're asking yourself 2 raised to some number equals 8. So you're trying to figure out what that number is. So basically, a logarithm is just asking the question, what number do I have to raise a certain number in order to get another number? Okay. So here we've got the formal definition written. And these are actually equivalent to one another. So y equals log base b of x is equal to b to the y equals x. These are the same thing, just written in a different form. So on the left, we have the log form. And here we have the exponential form. You're familiar with an exponential form. We studied an entire chapter on this. But basically, we can convert this into log form by using our same base. So b is equal to the base. y is the exponent, which is also the log. Okay, So y is, is the logarithm, but it's just the exponent in your exponential equation. And x, we call the argument. Okay, So we actually read this as the log base b of x is y. So log base b of x is y. Okay. Now, there are some restrictions on x and b. x and b must, must be positive, um, and b cannot equal 1. So like 1 raised to any power isn't very interesting. So that's why our base here um, is not going to equal 1, and it must be positive as well. And therefore, because it's positive, Anything we raise that number to, let's say it's negative 3, even a negative value for our y, our exponent here, will always result in a positive value. So our argument must always be positive, as well as this base. Okay, So this might not make complete sense yet, because this is new, you know, completely new for you guys. Um, but let's go through a chart so that you can kind of see how exponential form and logarithmic form are related. So let's work on our first objective here, which is to be able to convert from exponential form to logarithmic form, or vice versa. So let's start with our first one, which is in log form, and convert it into exponential. So the first thing I want to do is make sure I, I can understand and read this. I hope that after we go through these examples, you're going to get a lot more confident with what logarithmic form looks like and how it relates to exponential form. So if you have any questions or you're not quite understanding, I think after we complete this table, you'll have a better idea. Okay, so when I read this, I read this as log base 3 of 81 is equal to 4. So in other words, 3 raised to the 4th power would give me 81. So 3 raised to the 4th power would give me 81. Okay, now in exponential form, I start with my base. My base is 3, so I'm going to write 3. And I know I'm raising it to this power here. Remember, the log is equal to your exponent. So 3 to the 4th power is equal to my argument, which is 81. Okay. Now when we convert from exponential form to log form, we're just going to go a little bit backwards here, and we're going to start with log. We look at our base. Our base here is 6, so log base 6. Now the next thing that's going to come here is the argument. We want to know what that number is supposed to equal when we raise it to some power. So that number here is 216. So log base 6 of 216 is equal to our exponent 3. Please try this one on your own and check your answer with the key. Uh, we'll skip ahead to the next one. Now on this one, when I try to write this in exponential form, I'm actually missing the base. I see that there is no small subscript here um, indicating what my base will be. And that's because this is a base 10 logarithm. So similar to when you see something um, that's a square root, you don't really see that 2 written ever 
Um, when it's the cube root, we have to write that 3 here, but when it's the square root, we just assume that it's raised to the 1 half power. We don't actually have to write the 2 in. That's the same kind of idea for a log with base 10. So when you don't see a number here, that's actually equivalent to log base 10, okay? So now that I know that my base is 10, I'm going to write that over here, and I'm going to look at the exponent. Remember, this is 10 raised to the negative fifth power would equal 1 ten thousandth. So equals 0 0.00001. I'm going to practice one more time with you converting an exponential into a log, and then I'll let you guys try these ones as well on your own. Um, just follow the pattern that we've been looking at, and I think you should be okay. Okay, so on this one here, I'm going to start with the word log. So I have log base 2. My argument here is 1 over 32. So log base 2 of 1 32nd is equal to negative 5, my exponent. Okay, so that's our first objective, which is just to be able to rewrite something from exponential into logarithmic form or vice versa. Um, it's really going to help when you try to evaluate logs if you can kind of simultaneously think of both forms. All right, so let's work on our second objective, evaluating logs. Now, when evaluating logs, really you're thinking backwards about an exponential form. So if 3 to the 4th is equal to 81, then log base 3 of 81 must equal 4. It's the exponent that it would take this number raised to in order to get to that argument 81. So in other words, 3 raised to some power equals 81. That's actually what you're asking yourself in the question. Now in this next one here, if 9 to the 0 is equal to 1, right, anything to the 0 power is equal to 1, then log base 9 of 1 must equal 0. In other words, 9 raised to the 0 power has to equal 1. So every time we complete a question, we're going to ask ourselves the same question. You look at your base and you think, what number do I have to raise that base to in order to equal the number here, the argument, okay? So in this question, I'm asking 2 raised to what number equals 64. Now, this would be 6, right? 2 to the 6th power would equal 64, so log base 2 of 64 is 6. So this is what it's evaluated at. When I evaluate a log, I'm looking for the number that I have to raise that base to in order to get the argument, okay? Now, number 4, same thing. 4 raised to some number is going to equal 1 16th. That number would be negative 2. If I raise 4 to the negative second power, I'd end up with 1 16th. So log base 4 of 1 16th is equal to negative 2. Okay, in number 5, we're going to ask ourselves, 3 raised to what power would equal 243? So 3 raised to the fifth power gives me 243. So log base 3 of 243 is equal to 5. Okay. The next question here, same deal. I'm, I'm asking myself, the base, 25, raised to some number should equal 5. Now in this case, this is similar to an exponential equation where we want to figure out what that power has to be in order to get a smaller number. Well, I can rewrite this as 5 squared, right? So 5 squared raised to some number should equal 5. Well, if I want to equate exponents here, then 2 times some number should equal 1, which means that this number is 1 half. 2 times 1 half would give me 1, okay? So log base 25 of 5 should equal 1 half. Now I'd like you guys to try 7 and 8 on your own, and then check with the key, and I'm going to move on to 9 and 10. Now number 9 looks slightly different than the other problems, but we're going to use the same strategy here to try to evaluate this. So I want to convert this into an exponential, okay? So I'm asking myself 6, my base, raised to some number is supposed to equal my argument, and my argument happens to be an exponent itself, 6 to the 8th power. Well, from here, it's really easy to see that that number has to equal 8, right? So in other words, 6 raised to the 8th power has to equal my argument, 6 to the 8th. Now, this is a pattern that you're going to see often, and it helps in evaluating logs in the future, so we really want to make sure that you're comfortable with this. So when you see something in the form with log base b of b to the x, this will always equal x, okay? So let's, let's take a look at why this is. Well, if you look at log base b of b, and we try to evaluate this, what this is saying is b raised to some number is supposed to equal b. Well, obviously, b has to be raised to its the first power. So log base b of b, these kind of cancel each other out. This is equal to 1. Okay, So this is equal to 1, 
and we drop that exponent down and we just say it is equal to x. So log base b of b to the x equals x. All right. And uh, just to give you another example of this, let's say I have log base 3 of 3 to the fifth power. Okay, and I'm trying to evaluate this. I turn this into an exponential and I ask 3 raised to some number is supposed to equal 3 to the fifth. So that number here must equal 5. So I can come and look at this and say, okay, when I see log base 3 of 3, these cancel and leave me with just the 5. It's like having 1 third times 3. These are inverses of each other, okay, and that's why they cancel. So a really important rule here, I'd like you to write that at the top of your paper and like circle it, color it, star it, whatever you have to do to remember um, that this is something you're going to refer to quite often. So number 10 is definitely different than any of the problems that you've seen so far because this is written in exponential form, okay? Um, the power here contains a log, so let's try to convert this. When we're given something in exponential form, we want to convert this to log form. So let's put this in log form first and see what we can come up with from here. So if we're doing this in log form, I start with log, I have a base of 3, right? Now, I don't know what this is equal to, which means I don't know what the argument is, right? I don't know what my argument is, so I'm going to put the question mark next to log base 3. Now, I do know what the exponent is, right? The exponent here is this whole phrase, so log base 3 of 11. Now, if you're looking at this, clearly we know that that argument then must equal 11, okay? So log or 3 raised to the log base 3 of 11 is equal to 11. That's actually what this is evaluated at 11. So it's kind of similar over here to what we just learned. Um, this is going to cancel each other out. 3 raised to a log with the same base that's equal to 1. So this cancels and leaves you with just your exponent here, in other words 11. Okay, so when you see something in the form, whoops, x raised to the log base x of b, this will equal b. So x raised to the log with the same base, these cancel each other out, this is equal to 1, and it leaves you with this b. So this is another thing I'd like you to write at the top of your paper. Um, you will be using both of these kind of often um, throughout our chapter. So the last part of our lesson and the last objective for today is to be able to solve log equations. When you're solving a log equation, there's three different types. Um, one, they can ask you to find the argument, they can ask you to find the log or the exponent, and they can ask you to find the base. So I've actually got this split up into three different types of questions. So our first series of questions here has the title finding the argument, and you're going to see that in each case, notice how the x is in the argument spot. So our variable x appears as the argument. So we want to convert all of these into exponential equations first. So we're going to say the base here is 3, so 3 to the negative fourth power is equal to x. So here we're simply evaluating. These are pretty easy. When you're finding the argument, I think these will be the easiest for you because you simply just evaluate 3 to the negative fourth. We end up with 1 over 81, so x is equal to 1 over 81. Now in the next example, we have root 2 raised to the sixth power is equal to x. Now here we have a little bit of work to do because I want to rewrite this in a different form. So I rewrite that as 2 to the 1 half power raised to the sixth. And then I evaluate here, I get 2 to the third, so x must equal 8. Okay, I'd like you guys to try 13 and 14 and then check your answers with a key. Let's move on to the next type of uh, logarithmic equation in which you're trying to find the logarithm or the exponent. Okay. All right, so here we're going to, again, switch up the form and rewrite this as exponential form. So I have a log with a base of 2, so 2 raised to the x power is equal to 8. So in this case, I'm solving oops, an exponential equation here where I'm going to equate my bases. So I have 2 to the x equals 2 to the third, so simply x equals 3. Okay, and number 16, same thing. I'm going to look at my base here convert this to an exponential equation. So 27 raised to the x power should equal 81. Here I have to uh, rewrite both sides. So I have 3 to the third raised to the x equals 3 to the fourth. So 3x would equal 4 and x would equal 4 thirds. If you guys want extra practice you can do 17. Um, I'm going to go to 18 now 
because 18 is a little bit different. Uh, remember, when we define our logs, we said that the base had to be positive, and our argument also had to be positive. So this value here should be positive here. So because our base is negative, there's actually no solution to this equation. So there is no number. Um, you can also see it in your book. I think they write no number. But there's no solution to this particular equation, because if we take negative 1 fourth and we raise it to the x power, we will not get a positive 64. So we have no solution for this particular problem, because we can't have a negative base. So we don't want to have negative bases ever. Okay. So always double check to make sure that you have the conditions first to be able to solve the log equation, which means that you need to have a positive base and a positive argument. So both numbers here and here must be positive. Okay. So let's switch gears and go to the last type, which we're going to find the base. Okay. In the next set of questions here, we notice that our variable appears in the base. Okay, so we're still going to turn this into an exponential, but this time we have the base is our variable. So we have x raised to the 2 thirds is equal to our argument 4. Now, this is technically not an exponential equation because our base is not, um, our base is the, the variable as opposed to our exponent being the variable, but we did solve these types of questions in our last chapter. Remember, to try to solve an equation that looks like this, you want x to be to the first power, right? You, your goal is always to get x equals some number. Well, really, that's x to the first power equals a number. So I want to raise this left-hand side here to the 3 halves power so that I can cancel out those exponents. And I'm going to do the same thing on the right-hand side. So now I have x to the first power equaling 4 to the 3 halves power, which I will rewrite as 2 squared raised to the 3 halves power so that the 2's can cancel really easily. And I have x equaling 2 to the third power, or 8. Now, in the next example, this one's going to be a little bit trickier. Um, if I take x and I raise it to the second power, that should equal my argument 1 16th. Now, this might not look hard to solve, but you really have to remember something specific when you find your two solutions here. Um, make sure that when you square root this, or even if you took it to the half power, you're square rooting something. So you're going to get two unique solutions here. You're going to get x equaling a positive or a negative 1 fourth, right? I bet most of you guys would see this and want to square root both sides, so that's what I'm doing here. And I should get positive or negative 1 fourth. But you have to remember that in a log equation, your base has to be positive. So that means I throw out the negative solution here, and x is only going to equal positive 1 fourth. Now, you're going to see quadratics um, within a log equation eventually, further into the chapter. Um, in that case, you're going to get like two possibilities. Maybe x is 3 and x is equal to negative 2. If either of those values ends up giving your base to be a negative or your argument to be negative, then um, one of those would not be a solution. So in this case, I would throw out the negative 2 because I'd have a negative base here. Okay. So they do get more complex, but um, just be aware that you always want to check your solutions. Okay. So check solutions. Make sure you don't have a negative argument or a negative base. I think I spelled solutions wrong. I did. Oops, solutions. OK. All right, um, moving on to 22. I think I'll let you guys try this next one on your own. Let's move to 22. On number 22 here, I'm finding x raised to some power equal to 4. Well, clearly, this is not possible. I can't raise anything to the 0 power and get any number other than 1. So this is not possible. This has no solution. OK. Keep writing stuff with two eyes. No solution. All right. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. Um, tomorrow you're going to get a lot of practice with this. Make sure you come to class ready to ask any questions. If you're still unsure on how to rewrite something from log form to exponential form, please go back and watch that section of the video again because that's really the foundation for being able to do any of these log equations. Okay. All right. Nice job. I'll see you tomorrow.